Hello. So I would like to talk to you now about the law of signs. Um, to give a little preliminary remark, we've been doing trigonometry with right triangles. And this might go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, that there are a lot of real world applications involving triangles where the triangle in question is not a right one. Um, if we want to sound fancy about it, A triangle that is not a right triangle is called an oblique triangle. And we would like to be able to do trigonometry with oblique triangles. And to sort of clarify what our goals are here, We'd like to be able to solve triangles. And when we talk about solving triangles, we want to be able to find the sides and the angles of the triangles. And in the situation where the triangle is not right, in the situation where we have oblique triangles, there are two rules we can use to help us solve triangles, the law of sines and the law of cosines. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to talk about the law of sides in this lesson. So the law of sides says, suppose you have an oblique triangle. It's got sides A and B and C and angles alpha, beta, and gamma. So the angle alpha is opposite the side A, the angle beta is opposite the side B, the angle gamma is opposite the side C. And the law of sines is a string of equalities. That the sine of alpha over A is equal to the sine of beta over B is equal to the sine of gamma over C. And the law of sines is going to allow us to solve some triangles depending on what information we already have. So there are three cases we'll look at where the law of sines is going to be useful. The first case this is a very standard abbreviation. You might have seen it in high school geometry already, but if not, ASA just stands for angle, side, angle. 
angle. So this is a situation where we know an angle, let's say 30 degrees. We know a side, let's say 40. And then we know another angle um, that might be, oh, let's say 35 degrees. If we're in this case, we can use the law of signs to completely solve the triangle. I'm not going to actually do it at this moment. That will be another video. I'm just saying that this is one of the cases where we can use the law of signs. And in this ASA, the order matters here. That is to say, it's angle, side, angle. You see, as we read from left to right, we see the angle, the A, then we see the side, the S, then we see the other angle, the other A. So something like, something like this would not be thought of as being in this ASA case. It's true that we have two angles and a side, but the side is in the wrong place. Fortunately, we can still deal with this. We just give the case a different name. Angle, angle, side. And in this situation where we know an angle and then we know a neighboring angle and we know a side, we can use the law of signs once again to solve the triangle. The third case where we use the law of signs is S, S, A, side, side, angle. So if maybe we know this side and we know this side and we know this angle. That would be called SSA. And again, even though, I mean, this side, side, angle, the specific side and the specific angle matter here. It's side, side, angle. As we move counterclockwise, around the triangle. If instead of knowing this angle, we knew this angle, this would stop to be the SSA case. It would become the SAS case, which uh, we actually use a different uh, law for, the law of cosines. So, if we're in these cases, how can we use the law of signs? Well, that's what we will find out as we move through this section. But for now, this video is probably plenty long. So, let's cover that material in its own videos.